Uh, my name is Jonathan Carr, and this is Jacob. Um, and I am a library associate at the Dallas Public Library. And I am also a library associate at the Dallas Public Library. However, I also teach fencing at a local club called the Fencing Institute of Texas. And today we're going to do a little demonstration and give you a little information about the Olympic sport of fencing. Uh, if you think about knights in armor, uh, and they had big swords called long swords, and they looked like this, and they were wearing all that armor, and basically what the sword was used for was to sort of pound through that person's armor. Uh, so it would look sort of like uh, a big, sharp baseball bat was the idea behind it. Um, ironically, when the gun was invented, they stopped wearing the armor, and because of that, swords did not have to be uh, these big, heavy things. They became much lighter. Uh, so in the Renaissance period, they came up with the sword called the rapier. The rapier uh, was lighter, and because of that, they could use the sword not only for um, attacking, but also defending themselves with it. So they weren't wearing, you weren't using shields anymore uh, as much. In that period, um, the idea of personal honor became very important. And uh, if you were uh, insulted, you were expected to fight a duel. Um, if you didn't accept a challenge, or if you didn't challenge for the duel, you were actually considered a coward, and you might lose your property. Uh, so it was very important to fight, uh, to be able to fight duels back then. So you would go to a school that would teach you how to fight with the sword, because that's what duels were fought with back in that time. And at those schools, um, they were called schools of defense, or schools of fence, and that's where the word fencing comes from. So uh, we devised a way, they devised a way to uh, wear equipment that would protect you and use swords that weren't uh, sharp, they were blunted. And that way you could practice using the sword and then if you had to go fight a duel, you could do that. So there is a piece of equipment uh, that we'll be using here in a moment. So in the 19th century, it started becoming more of an activity uh, and a sport, uh, but also it's often described as physical chess where um, the, you, you have to watch your opponent, you have to guess two or three moves ahead of them, uh, and then figure out how to attack and defend against them that way. So what we're going to do now is kind of go through some of the actions of the fencing, uh, how a fencer uh, actually uh, fights. So the first thing, Jacob, I want you to do is stand facing me like this, oh, okay. together. So what I want you to do is take your left foot and put it behind your right foot like that, okay? This is referred to as first position, okay? Now, from first position, you're going to take your front foot and you're gonna step forward about shoulder width apart, okay? Keep your legs straight for the moment. Very good, okay? Now, from this position, what I want you to do is pretend there's a stool underneath you and you're gonna sit down on the stool, so just bend your knees to do that. Yeah, excellent, good. Now your sword arm is out in front, the elbow is bent, Right, because you're preparing to either attack your opponent or defend against your opponent's attack. Right? Uh, and then your back arm is going to be up out of the way like this. This helps with balance. It also makes sure that your back hand doesn't get hit. Okay? You're now in second position, or this is often called the on guard position. Third position is even better. Um, what you're going to do uh, is uh, extend into a lunge. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to step forward with my front foot. Mm -hmm. Keep my back foot planted and land like that. Very good, right? There's third position. When you do that, your back arm's gonna come out like this. So both arms are here. Very good. That helps with the balance. Yeah. Also, when you get back up, you use your back arm to kind of pull you back up. So that's the recovery. Very good. Okay. So those are the positions. Now you can see Jacob is turned sideways very well because the main target area is the stomach and the chest. Right? So he's trying to hide that target area. He's going to have his sword in front of him um, to help, again, defend against that. Um, and then, because the fencing competition strip is only about six feet wide, and you're not allowed to go behind your opponent, you move back and forth in this position. So if I'm like this, if Jacob wants to come forward, it's called the advance. So you're going to start with your front foot and just take a step, and then finish with the back foot. Very good. If you're going to go backwards, it's the retreat. All right, so you start with your back foot and go backwards like that. Very good. 
One of the main principles in fencing is called distance. I don't want to get too close to my opponent to get hit, but too far away that I can't make an attack. So we're going to do a distance drill where you're going to follow me, okay? So you can get position, so if I advance, you're going to retreat. Retreat, exactly. Boom. And if I retreat, you're going to advance. Good. All right, so we just go back and forth like this. Good. 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 Very good. Okay. So we're going to put on the equipment. So, Jake, you're going to put your mask on. Very good. That's going to cover the face. And then on his sword hand, he's wearing a glove, as am I. And here is the sword. Very good. So there are three types of swords. You don't mix them when you're competing. You decide which one you want to compete with, and you use it. And then your opponent has the same type of sword. We're going to do the foil because the foil is sort of the the framework for uh, fencing. Everything you learn with the foil kind of applies to what you can use with the epee and the saber. Okay? So, now, you're going to get back into second position again. Let's see if you remember that. Very good. He's got his sword out, his elbow bent. That's good. And his back arm turns sideways to his opponent, which is me. So we've got our swords here. So, again, Jacob can either defend or attack with his sword. All right. You can see how the blade bends, right? That's what it's supposed to do. So it absorbs the impact by the bend. Good, very good. Now, Jacob doesn't want to get too close to me to try and make a hit because if he tries to get closer, I'm gonna hit him, all right? Don't want that to happen. So he's gonna use that move called the lunge, all right? So he's gonna lunge forward, ah, he's gonna hit me, and then he's gonna get back up out of the way before I can hit him. Very good, well done, okay? Um, I don't want to get hit though, so I've got a couple of options. If he lunges at me, I'm going to just get out of the way, he gets back up. But my other option is to block the attack. So he attacks me, I block it, that's called the parry. After I parry is a great time to make an attack called the riposte, where I can try and hit him. And remember we're trying to hit each other on the torso because we're using the foils. Good, okay? So your decisions when you're, when you're fencing are either one of you can decide to make an attack, come at me, I can try and block it. Once I've done that, he's gonna get it back up. If I try to make that riposte, he may try and block that. Very good. And then he can make his riposte. Ah, I get hit. I say touche. Um, touche is what the fencer says when they get hit, not what the other fencer who is hitting them says. This is part of the honor of the sport of fencing. I have to acknowledge when I'm hit. So I would say touche, I would salute my opponent, right, because he made a nice attack. Then we would get back on guard again. Very good. Um, I look at the target as if it's uh, got four areas I can attack. I can attack above his blade, below his blade, inside of his blade, or outside of his blade. And that's where his parries will go. If he attacks, if I attack here, he's parrying to the inside. It's actually parry cart. If I attack to the outside, there's the six. Very good. And then again, he can make his repost from there. Touche. Very good. All right. So now we're going to play for a second. Now Jacob's ready for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Try my best. Yeah. All right. So we're going to tap each other's blades. That means we're ready. And then you can either try and score or defend against me. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Good. Parry. Good. Touche. Uh, good. But where did I hit you? Uh, in the shoulder. On the shoulder. Very good. So he did say touche, which he's supposed to do, but that's not the target area that we talked about, right? The torso is the target area. So it would be called off target. No one would get a point. Very good. All right. So we'll try again. Good. Ah, touche. Very good. He got me on the target area. He gets a point. Well done. I'm going to take our masks off. We would salute very quickly. So that is uh, basically the actions of uh, fencing. And I want to thank uh, Jacob for helping me out here. Thanks for having me. Hope you enjoy the video and go out and fence. Bye.